Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'm showing you the world's fastest Intel Tiger Lake processor clocked all the way up to 5.8 gigahertz using a little bit of liquid nitrogen and a motherboard from a company called Erin. In addition to showing you the validation, I also have a couple of benchmark results and I'll provide you some thoughts on extreme overclocking Intel Tiger Lake. Let's jump in. In preparation for this video, I finished a Scatterbencher guide demonstrating how to overclock this Core i9-11980HK processor. It is certainly unusual to be able to overclock Tiger Lake because it never made it to the DIY desktop market. Intel famously opted for Rocket Lake instead. The long story short is that Er Ing puts these mobile BGA package CPUs onto desktop size motherboards. Since BJ processors don't sit on top of a socket, their Z height will be much lower than a typical desktop processor. So Er Ing puts a unique heat spreader on top of the BGA CPU to maintain compatibility with most desktop coolers. After finishing the Scatterbencher overclocking guide, I pinged Elmore from Elmore Labs to see if I could spend a day in his office testing the CPU with liquid nitrogen. I'm sure you're thinking, why would you want to overclock Intel Tiger Lake with liquid nitrogen? Isn't this a mobile only and old architecture? Well, yes it is. But I still wanted to overclock Tiger Lake and push it to the limit with liquid nitrogen for two reasons. First, because I never overclocked Tiger Lake before. So it's an exciting experiment to see how it stacks up against Comet Lake, Rocket Lake and Alder Lake in terms of performance and overclocking capabilities. Second, Tiger Lake is made using the 10 nanometer super thin process. This is the third generation of Intel's famously plagued 10 nanometer following Cannon Lake and Ice Lake. And it's the predecessor of Alder Lake's 10 nanometer enhanced super thin, which we now have to call Intel 7. Since Alder Lake, the maximum frequency of Intel's CPUs has been increasing rapidly, culminating in the world's first 9 GHz CPU. Okay, that's right. Nope. That's right. This side? Okay, okay. Let's try again. Let's try again. One point higher. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay, one more. Okay. One more. One more. Okay. Yes! 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 My main objective for this video was to have a legitimate claim to the title of world's fastest Intel Tiger Lake. And for that, I figured I need two data points. First, of course, the highest frequency ever recorded for Tiger Lake, and two, a P1 in a benchmark. For the CPU frequency record, I rely on the CPU-Z database. The highest CPU frequency I could find was 5187.31 MHz by X17 on an Alienware laptop. I could even beat that by using regular water cooling, achieving 5.4 GHz. So my CPU frequency target was twofold. One, the highest validated CPU-Z frequency, and two, the highest validated XOC CPU-Z frequency. The difference is easily explained. In normal mode or non-XOC mode, CPU-Z will run a very heavy all-core workload before recording the frequency. In XLC mode, it just records the frequency. For the benchmark objective, I checked hardware bot to find the most used SKUs and benchmarks with Tiger Lake processors. Obviously, there aren't many. The Core i7-11800H has the most submissions with 5,100 results. The Core i5-11400H has the second most with about 670 results and the 11980HK is the third most with about 650 results. Then I looked for the most used benchmarks, and it turns out that's XDU 2.0. The highest Tiger Lake score was 5503 by The Crusher, with a Core i7-11800H at 4.6 GHz. 
Ironically, I was pretty confident I could crush this score with liquid nitrogen. <laughs> Next up is the hardware system. There were a couple of things that I wanted to get right. First, I swapped out the thermal paste between the CPU die and the heat spreader with Thermal Ride TFX Extreme. This paste does pretty well under extreme cooling conditions. Second, I used the Elmo Labs Volcano LN2 container. That's the same pot used for the 9GHz CPU frequency world record. I figured if it can do that, it'll suit my Tiger Lake as well. Third, I use an Elmo Labs Hot 300 heater controller and heater backplate. This is a nifty device that heats up the back of the motherboard and that helps prevent the cold of the nitrogen from spreading across the PCB, which could create patches of condensation. Regarding potential challenges, there are definitely a couple of things that we need to look out for. First, Tiger Lake uses Fiverr to power the CPU cores. Among the extreme overclocking community, Fiverr is known to create a lot of difficulties under liquid nitrogen due to cold bug. To put it simply, Fiverr stops operating below minus 100 degrees Celsius. Second, this motherboard has no auto rules to assist with extreme overclocking. Boards like the ROG Apex or Aorus Tachyon have a bunch of BIOS auto rules that help set the proper voltages and settings for pushing the CPU in XOC conditions. It might be difficult to diagnose or work around specific issues without the auto rules. Third, while we exchange the thermal paste between the CPU die and heat spreader, it is still a subpar thermal transfer mechanism, so we can expect some difficulties in high load scenarios. Lastly, there's actually very limited information available on how to overclock Intel Tiger Lake. So there might be Tiger Lake specific quirks or oddities that we're unaware of, that are we unfamiliar with. So we're going into uncharted territory, that's for sure. Anyway, let's move on to the results. As I showed at the beginning of the video, the highest frequency I achieved with Tiger Lake was 5816.91 MHz with 1.45 volt. The LN2 container temperature was about minus 50 degrees Celsius. The CPU was pretty unstable at this point. Strangely enough, it was impossible to run the 56x ratio, and I had to resort to BCLK overclocking to achieve the result. As you can see from the CPU-Z validation page, the result is marked as unchecked because it was achieved with XOC mode enabled. The highest stable frequency I achieved with Tiger Lake was 5486.58 MHz with 1.43 volt. CPU-Z marked this result as validated because it ran in non-XLC mode. The highest XTU 2.0 benchmark score achieved with Tiger Lake was 6301 point. The processor was clocked at 5486 MHz with 1.43 volt. The memory was clocked at DDR4-4000. While the LN2 container was at minus 70 degrees Celsius, the core temperature spiked to plus 19 degrees Celsius under load. This score was sufficient for P1 across all Tiger Lake submissions at HWBOT. I also scored 17,390 in Cinebench R23 multi-core and 1,638 in Cinebench R23 single core with those exact same settings. In terms of operating temperature, Tiger Lake did surprisingly well. I could keep the CPU running at minus 100 degrees Celsius, though I ran it at minus 50 degrees Celsius most of the time. The good news is that we achieved everything we set out to achieve, but could we do any better? I think so. The first and most crucial bottleneck for achieving better overclocking results is what I believe to be a PLL issue. Think about it. We can run everything stable at 55x, but cannot even set 56x. If that sounds like a familiar problem, you're right. It's pretty much what we saw on Sandy Bridge. The solution introduced on Sandy Bridge was an option called PLL over voltage. By increasing the PLL voltage, you're able to get higher frequencies. Increasing the PLL voltage is standard practice and an XOC auto rule on many enthusiast motherboards. PLL over voltage is also available on Tiger Lake and it's available in this motherboard's BIOS, but there's a catch. For PLL over voltage to succeed, the PLL input voltage must be at least 150 millivolt higher than the target PLL voltage. This input voltage is an external package pin, and unless it is specifically implemented by the motherboard engineers, it is not available. 
However, on some motherboard designs, the voltage is connected to the VDDQ power rail. Unfortunately, it didn't seem that increasing VDDQ helped increase the overclocking headroom. Aside from the PLL issue, it also seems that the voltage scaling isn't that great. Increasing the voltage beyond 1.5 volt didn't yield much higher frequencies. In terms of temperature scaling, there is some improvement. Going from plus 40 to minus 50 degrees Celsius gives us about plus 600 megahertz at 1.4 volt. That's not too shabby. That's mostly at idle, however. Under load, it's quite a different story. Whether it's the transistor density or the poor thermal transfer due to the heat spreader, the thermals spike up pretty quickly whenever we throw a heavy all-core load at the CPU. One way to address this would be to remove the heat spreader and run direct die. Even though that's a very exciting idea, it's a little bit risky, so it will have to wait for a future video. Overall, this was a pretty cool project to undertake. Between overclocking Tiger Lake with liquid nitrogen, which I don't think anyone has ever done, uh, using a non-Taiwanese, non-enthusiast motherboard to do so, and seeing how 10 nanometer superfin scales when temperature is not a concern, this was pretty interesting, at least for me it was. There are still some ways that we could probably improve the frequency and the benchmark results, but that's for some other video or for someone else to figure out. Anyway, that's all for this video. I'd like to thank you for watching and my patrons for the support. And of course, I also want to thank Elmo Labs for the hospitality. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section below and see you next time.